Welcome to Einstein's Mechanics. In this episode, we are going to start with circuit element for applied electricity. So we are beginning from the basis so that we can dive deeper. So before we look at any other thing, let's look at circuit element because electricity is going to be all about circuit analysis, the elements and how they combine to form a meaningful circuit. So circuit elements. What is a circuit element? So or first we have a circuit and we have elements. Let's get to know both. An element is a basic building block of a circuit. So when we talk about an element in a circuit, we are talking about the building block of a circuit. This means those things that we use to build up a circuit, the interconnected parts that come together to form a circuit. This is what we call elements. Are we okay? So when we look at the diagram here, we can see a lot of elements we have diodes a lot of them we have wires a lot of them now these are elements that combine to form the entire circuit or the entire board are you okay so a combination of these elements individual elements now you can see them a combination of all of them now forms a circuit so when we refer to as a, an element, they are the basic building block of a circuit. Just like cells in the human body, these cells combine to form tissues and they combine to form organs to get the complete human organism or any other organism. The same thing, elements are the basic building blocks. Are you okay? Now, if they combine, they are going to form a circuit. What then is a circuit? So a circuit is an interconnection of the various elements. Very simple. So when these various elements, being a diode, resistors, transistors, and other cells combine, they form a circuit. Are you okay? All right. Generally, there are two types of elements. This element, these building blocks, there are two types. In our studies, we are going to talk a lot about these elements, and we have two of them, so we have to pay attention and know them. First, elements we are going to talk about, it can be an active element. So, we've talked about element, we can say resistors, we can also say capacitors or capacitor. We also have elements such as inductors or inductor. All these elements and a lot, we categorize them under active elements and passive elements. Are you okay? We are going to take them one after the other and know how to identify an active element and how to identify a passive element. Very interesting. Now, an active element. So, in our studies, an active element, they are also called sources and they generate electrical energy. So, the basics for calling them electrical or active element is that they generate electrical energy. Very simple. So, any active element is a source. In our next episodes, we are going to see, we talk about source, we are going to talk about elements into deep. And you know that some of the elements actually generate electricity. So we call them the source. Are we okay? We call them the source. And all these elements that generate electricity are called active elements. Examples. We have cells. We have solar modules. We have batteries, we have generators. All these examples, we can see they generate electricity. The simplest one, batteries. We know that in remotes, we put in batteries in our calculators, batteries in our electrical gadgets, we put in batteries to generate electricity. 
the generation of generating of electricity very important to generate electricity we know generator its main function is to what? generate electricity therefore all these are called active elements so in any instance when i mention an active element what comes in mind is the generation of what electricity and if i also mention something like a source element a source element what should come in mind is also the generating of what electricity so these are active elements now since we are talking about active elements and the generation of electricity we must also talk about what currents we are still on the active element current so we know that this current is going to what be meaningful for the electricity are you okay so if active elements are going to produce or generate electricity then we should talk about the electrical current they are going to what produce so what is electrical current then Current is defined as the time rate of net motion of electrical charges across a cross sectional boundary. Very simple. So, anytime there is a net movement, a net movement, a net movement, a net movement of electrical charges across a cross section, there is what? Electrical current. So mathematically, we, we denote current by the letter I, either I or I for current. In our studies, we are going to use the I for current. From the definition, we can write an equation for it as current is the time rate of net motion of electrical charges, where electrical charges less Call electrical charges. The charges should be denoted by what? Q. And the time rate, time, is also denoted by T. Therefore, current is the decay on dt. The, the time rate, I will okay. This is calculus. The time rate of net motion of electrical charges is current. Let's note something. A random motion. We are starting electricity, so we should get the basis into details, and this will help us a lot. The random motion of electrons in a metal does not constitute electric currents. So, just any random movement, let's say any random, this electron is moving this way, this is going that way, this electron is coming. This is moving, this is coming. This is a random movement of what charges. And we are saying a random motion of electrons in a metal does not constitute electric current unless there is a net transfer. Are you okay? Unless there is a net transfer. So we have our medium, unless these charges move what uniformly or they all have net movement before we can say electricity or electrical current is what taking place looking at this part this is random so it does not constitute what electricity are you okay all right so this is all about electrical current any times electrons they move uniformly in a conductor or a metal then electrical current is what induced and we know our current is equal to the charges per what? The time rate. All right. Let's look at potential difference and EMF. Since active elements also produce or generate electricity, we've known what current does. Let's also look at potential difference. Now, when we talk about potential difference throughout our studies, what we are going to say is potential difference between two points in any electrical circuit is the difference in their electrical states, which tends to cause the flow of electric current. This is very simple. 
and it's very applicable in most of what our engineering cases when we talk about heat transfer and other things the difference should be clear osmosis diffusion all happens on what a different base so here we are saying potential difference when we take let's say a wire this form or a metal at this point a and at this point b if they have different potentials then it is going to cause the flow of what electric current are you okay so let's assume elect we have 15 electrons here and we have two electrons here now we can see that there's a difference between this point a and point b are you okay so the difference in their electrical state and you know that the electrical state is talking about the availability of what electrons that will move to cause the electricity so since there is a difference in the electrical states there's going to cause a flow now these electrons are going to flow in this direction and you know as electrons begin to flow electrical current is what induced so potential difference is very simple it talks about just the difference in what the electrical state between two points where electrons will what, tend to move to cause electricity remember if this point is 15 electrons and this point is 15 there will not be any movement because they are in what equilibrium are we okay so that's what we call potential difference there should always be a potential difference in circuit for current to what move now let's look at the emf the emf is the force that causes an electric current to flow in an electric circuit remember although there is a potential difference in this metal or between these two points these electrons are only going to move under the influence of, of what a force and that force is going to cause some of these 15 electrons to move to the two electrons part is called the emf emf the electromotive force that's what our emf are we good so there should be always a potential difference in circuit so let's see if i have this circuit you talk more about circuits don't worry and there's my plus my negative for electrons or for current to move this is our current direction to move throughout this circuit there should be a potential difference looking at this point of the battery or cell this positive so it is rich in electrons say 50 and this is negative meaning it's lack electrons say two now because of this potential difference this current is going to move from the higher source because of the potential difference to the lower source are you okay and this is not moving on its own there is a force moving these electrons and this force is what we are calling it as electromotive force or the emf are you okay now let's look at passive elements this is interesting. This episode is interesting, and we are going to dive in electricity into details of questions and examples throughout. You are going to love it. Passive elements. Now we talk about active elements, knowing they generate electricity, they are source. Any other thing does not make it active element. So, what then is a passive element? So these elements are not capable of generating electricity or energy yeah electrical energy because it is active element that has the capacity to generate electricity passive element do not generate electricity so what then do they do but they can either store or dissipate energy supply to it so then they are just storage rooms or dissipation room are you okay they can only store the energy the electricity produced by the active element they can store them they have the capacity to store electrical what charges charges 
and they also have the ability to dissipate to or transfer it or to dump it somewhere that's what we mean by the dissipation of what energy supplied to it are you okay so in the active element they are source they produce energy they produce electricity we saw batteries cells generators now any element that you see in a circuit that store the electricity or it dissipates when it is given to it it also what transfer it to a point or it just waste it it is what a passive element are you okay so example of this passive elements are resistance elements that's what we mostly call the resistor so a resistor which dissipates the energy supplied to it so in our studies we are going to talk about resistors we are going to dive deep into resistor how to arrange them calculate for their arrangement is it's interesting so resistors they dissipate energy energy supplied to them are dis dissipated are you okay which makes them passive element now in any circuit drawn, this is the representation of what? A resistor. So anytime you see this symbol, we are talking about what? A resistor. A resistor. Or you can see it as this form. This is also a representation of what? A resistor. A passive element. Are we good? Now, another element is also the capacitance element which we also call capacitor capacitor stores the energy supplied to them by the external circuit or by the active elements in its electrical field are you okay so for capacitors when the energy is supplied to them they do not dissipate it but they store unlike resistors which dissipate capacitors store the electrical energy meaning a capacitor has the ability to store electrical energy it makes them quite dangerous when you're dealing with large capacitors they can shock you they can cause damage to you because of the storage of the electrical what energy and in our circuit you are also going to see if we draw a capacitor you are going to see it this way this is a capacitor, the diagrammatic representation of what? A capacitor. Know the difference between a capacitor and a battery or a cell. When we are drawing a battery, one is longer, one is shorter, this way. But for capacitor, it is the same. We can see the same length as in this. And even for batteries, we indicate this is a positive, this is a negative. Nothing of that sort happens to what? Capacitor. So this is a capacitor and our last passive element is what inductance element what we also call the inductor is also an interesting passive element so it stores the energy supplied to it by the external circuit in its magnetic field so inductors also store energy so we can see that it's only the resistor that is dissipating the capacitor the inductor they are all storing the energy so all these elements are passive because of their storage and dissipation ability now when you see an inductor this is the representation of an inductor so an inductor is drawn this way so this is an inductor it is mostly represented by l capacitor by c and a resistor by r so these are passive element. I hope you understand them. So this is a diagram representing an electrical circuit. So this, we can see both active and passive elements here. So from our drawings, we saw that this is a resistor. This is what? An inductor. And this is what? A capacitor. So this is a source. This is a source. And we know that this source is producing what? The electrical energy. This is producing the electricity and it will cause the movement of what? Current to flow through the circuit. Are we okay? And these are 
passive element. This resistor will dissipate. This inductor has the ability to store, and this capacitor has the ability to store. So this is a typical electrical energy, electrical circuit, which combines all the elements. You know, elements they are the building block of what the circuit. This is one element. The second, the third, and the fourth element they combine with the wires to give us a complete circuit. Thank you for watching this episode and check out for the next episode. Subscribe to the channel, like our videos, drop a comment. Let's look at what we need to add and how we are doing. We appreciate you so much. Stay with us in the next episode.